whenever you're ready to go. We're going. Where are we going? So our next speaker is, uh, I'm, I'm Bill Gardner, by the way. I co-founded co this event nine years ago. And thank you all for coming today. Uh, well, now to figure out how to use a phone, we'll be good to go. <laughs> so today, is our next speaker is Detective Jeremy M. Thompson. He's going to talk to you about mobile devices in you. So, thank you very much for coming to HackerCon, KWV. Thank you, sir. Let me get out of your way. All right. All right, I'll introduce myself real quick. Um, I'm Jeremy Thompson. I'm a detective here in South Charleston. Uh, I've been a police officer for a little over 17 years. Uh, I started my career in the Boone County Sheriff's Department. Uh, came from there. I've been with South Charleston for a little over seven years. Um, I'm currently assigned as a task force officer to the United States Secret Service Electronic and Financial Crimes Task Force. Um, I'm based out of the Charleston Resident Office. Um, do everything for them from uh, gas pump skimmers, cell phones, computers, whatever, whatever it entails. Um, I take care of that also for any other agency that needs uh, phones, uh, vehicles, um, anything else done. I have a memorandum of understanding with them that uh, I do that. Um, I was able to attend the National Computer Forensic Institute um, in Hoover, Alabama, which is sponsored by the United States Secret Service for their uh, local forensic partners. Um, I've did a little over three months of classes down there from basic uh, computer evidence recovery to mobile devices uh, to network intrusion. Um, I've got, I hold my certificate with uh, Celebrite for uh, logical operator. Um, for XRY for operator um, as well. Um, today, we'll talk a little bit about mobile devices. Uh, I'm going to touch on, we'll get into the topics, but touch on a little bit of what we do as law enforcement uh, when it comes to uh, the extraction of, of devices um, and also the other things that we use other than just your device itself. Um, if we would use something uh, as far as to be able to use something, anything illicit, uh, such as uh, Google and all these other, other places that track you. Um, topics we'll hit is uh, mobile devices in the United States, uh, the forensic programs that we, um, as law enforcement, utilize. Uh, the phone uses and social media, which is uh, huge on our part anymore. Uh, the mobile devices, uh, cell location data uh, that we are using, uh, and mobile devices in Google. As you can see, everybody now has a cell phone or a smartphone. Uh, most people have have two, some people have three, depending on what you're doing. Anywhere from, you may have an app, iPad to an Android phone uh, to another device. Uh, anytime we deal with anybody anymore, it's generally two phones. It's never just one phone anymore. They always have, uh, they always have their burner phone um, and their, their normal phone that they always use for uh, for day-to-day -day life. Um, the majority of the time is we're seeing uh, these guys are going out and buying Alcatel burner phones, uh, Walmart cheap phones. They don't care if they're encrypted. They don't care about anything with it. They just go buy them and use them. And that's what we, we as law enforcement are seeing more than anything uh, is, is the use of Android phones now. In 2001, when I started with the, uh, the Boone County Sheriff's Department, cell phones were non-existent, especially in Boone County. Um, you have some people have bagged phones in their car, not a whole lot of people. But you can see since 2010 until 2018 how much uh, the devices have grown with everybody. Um, now, like I said, everybody's got a phone, and everything has changed on our side for how we uh, deal with crimes. Uh, we, don't, we don't get to do the traditional... Um, investigations anymore. It's all digital. Um, we, hit, we hit Facebook. We hit social media like crazy when it comes to crimes. Uh, everybody, everybody likes to post what they do on Snapchat or Instagram, Facebook, and you would be shocked how many people post their illicit crimes 
on social media. Uh, we reach out to social media a bunch uh, for if we have a suspect that we don't we don't know we can't uh, identify. We throw it out on Facebook, and I guarantee you, you have pissed somebody off in your life, and they will call about you. You may have you may have took their crayons in kindergarten or something, but if they hate you, they will call the police, and people will call like crazy. Um, one recently that we had, we had uh, put a guy out. We didn't know who it was. Within 10 minutes, we had five people call and identify this guy. Everybody hated him. He was a thief, and everybody hated him, so everybody called. So we, you know, as, as our investigations change with everybody that's using smartphones, that's what we, have to, what we have to adapt to. And I found this to be interesting uh, for myself. And that's why, as I said, uh, Android has got the market by tenfold. You, know, you can see in this, 86% is Android, a little over 13% is Apple. So we, I mean, we are seeing, like I said, we're seeing more Android phones now, um, and people are encrypting them uh, a little differently than just what comes out of the box. So um, we'll get into what Celebrite and all those things do uh, for us, but I found, like I said, I found this interesting because most people, as far as what I deal with, is Apple. These are a couple of the programs uh, that we utilize, uh, which is Celebrite, uh, the UFED Touch 2, along with Physical Analyzer, uh, Magnet Forensics, uh, Internet Evidence Finder, uh, Magnet Forensics Axiom, and Gray Key. Um, the UFED uh, Touch 2, that's what uh, I utilize the majority of uh, for cell phone extractions, just because it is the, it's the best product that I've used uh, as far as what's out there. There are uh, the other programs, Magnet Axiom, uh, will do an extraction as well, but it will, not, uh, it will not bust passwords. It won't brute force them uh, like Celebrite will. So that's why a lot of times we will we'll use Celebrite uh, to bypass the password uh, or to give us the password, and then we will go into uh, Magnet Axiom and go from there. Where'd that go? Okay. Oh, that's fine. All right. All right, so we're back. Um, as I was saying with the uh, Celebrate UFED Touch 2, um, that, that's a little box. I'll show you a picture of what it looks like uh, that loads either the ADB backup uh, or the file system extraction stuff onto the phones uh, that, will, that will pull. Uh, physical analyzer is what we uh, use to throw the, uh, the dumps into. Uh, it will parse out the data uh, and give it to us in a readable format. Uh, we'll show a little bit. Of, as far as uh, I found some extractions that are on the internet uh, to show you what a, a report to us looks like once we uh, once we do it. Uh, gray key is if anybody's heard about gray shift or gray key as far as the brute force attacks onto iPhones uh, that they've came out with. Uh, it has one of the local agencies here has just got it. Um, it anything anything above twelve. Right now, it won't. It'll do just a limited uh, extraction on. So it helps 
for any cold cases that we've, uh, we've came about that we weren't able to get into phones at the time, uh, we are able to now uh, with gray key. Uh, if it's a four digit password, it can take up to nine minutes uh, to bust it. If it's a six digit password, it takes about, it could take upwards of 48 hours, depending on the complexity of the password. Uh, but this is this has proved very helpful to us in cold cases uh, to where at the time we weren't able to get any data from it. Uh, we were able to go into this, uh, start pulling stuff back. Celebrite has cornered the market uh, when it comes to uh, cell phones. They will they give out a very limited um, updates that will um, will bypass passwords uh, or unlock the phones. But if you send them a phone, an Android phone or an iPhone, uh, they'll charge you $2,500 uh, to unlock it to send it back to you. Well, a lot of PDs, I mean, that's, that's crazy for us to be able to, you know, to spend $2,500 to unlock a phone. Uh, on major cases, yes, it wouldn't be an issue. But, you know, when you have a drug, you know, a drug phone that you need to get into, why are we going to pay $2,500, you know, just for them? for something that's out there that they can give us, but they won't. Uh, so it's kind of kind of iffy. Um, Gray Key isn't, doesn't play well with Celebrite, so they're kind of doing their own doing their own thing uh, as of right now. So we don't, and Gray Key has started going with a company that's called uh, or XRY, MSAB. Uh, they've kind of joined with them uh, to start potentially be, to become the giant in cell phones. That's what they're trying to do. As we, as I was saying, what we do, um, if we seize a device um, prior to uh, Supreme Court case Riley v. California, if we, if we got a phone, we could just sit and go through it no, with no warrant. Uh, incident to arrest. So it was a search incident to arrest. Had, had nothing, there was nothing Supreme Court wise that said we couldn't. So we could sit and go through phones and if we're looking at a phone uh, after you were arrested and we find that there's text messages or pictures or anything of say a marijuana grow, um, a bunch of stuff that you have stolen that you have on your phone, we could have went and got a search warrant based on that uh, or an arrest warrant depending if we were able to identify the stuff and go from there. Well, in California, a guy by the name of, uh, last name of Riley, was, he was a gang member. Well, he was stopped by the police. When he was stopped by the police, they took it, uh, took his phone, started going through it. They were working a bunch of gang shootings. Lo and behold, they find the vehicle that was a gang shooting, looked at it, said, oh, this is the guy. They charged him. He was in, eventually convicted. Well, they appealed. Uh, the appeal ended up making it all the way to the Supreme Court. Supreme Court uh, ruled and said, no, you're, you have the expectation of privacy uh, of your phone as you do your vehicle in your house. So that, had, that completely changed uh, the way that we had to do stuff, uh, which I agree with when it comes to it because, you know, everybody has everything. Their whole lives are on their phone. You lose your phone, you know, kind of screws you a lot of the time. So I 100% I agree with that because why, why do I need to circumvent, you know, as Fourth Amendment rights to be able to get into a phone? So if you're, if we, if you don't have enough base to get into a phone anyways, you know, why, why we even worry about it? Um, our detect, or our officers at RPD know uh, that when they get a phone, um, that it automatically goes on airplane mode um, if they're able to, because it doesn't manipulate any evidence on it if you're putting it in airplane mode. Uh, we have had the problem uh, before of not putting a phone on airplane mode. Uh, lo and behold, the, uh, person is either released or not arrested when we take his phone. Uh, we go get his phone out of an evidence locker and it's wiped. They remote wiped it. So that has happened That has happened a bunch for people that either one, they didn't put it in airplane mode or two, they didn't think they needed to because they like, oh, this guy's not smart enough to be able to get into this, you know, to be able to wipe the phone and it gets wiped. So we have, we have ran into that uh, quite a bit, but it's, it's kind of worked itself out here lately. Because all it takes is one time getting your phone wiped. Everybody understands that what they need to do from then on. Well, uh, the way 
a lot of times you can you can access airplane mode without them opening it, but with some of the new stuff, especially if it's off or has been turned off, they have to have the password to open it back up. Um, if it comes down to it, uh, with some phones, we'll take the SIM card out of it because it can't hit the network. Um, if not, we will ask the person. You know, if they'll if they'll let us put it in airplane mode. If they tell us to go pound sand, then you know, there's just no way to there's no way for us to do it. We just have to deal with the you know the uh, possible repercussions of not being able to do it. Um, like I said, all the all the local agencies uh, here uh, use Celebrite, uh, so that's what we that's our bread and butter when it comes to the phone extractions. Um, but there's there's several limitations that come to uh, using U or the UFED Touch or the physical analyzer to do extractions. Um, encryption is a huge thing. There's just no way. Uh, there's no way for some of the stuff, for, you know, for us to be able to to bypass encryption. Uh, Apple products, uh, if we do, if we do iPhone uh, backup uh, extraction, we end up with an encrypted backup. Sometimes people encrypt their backups, and they know this. And when you ask them their password, they're all they're all about giving you their password or their phone. They know that their stuff's encrypted. So when you go to do an encryption, or you know, when you go to do a dump, uh, you load the uh, you load the dump into the UFED uh, or to the physical analyzer to look at it. As soon as it'll pop up, you need your uh, encryption key. At that point, you just have a bunch of garbage. We can't look at any of it. There's no way for us to be able to see. We can look what's on the phone, but if we need to look any deeper in anything else as far as uh, other messages, uh, contacts, call logs, those type of things, there's no way for us to get it. With that being said, if you do a backup with Apple, Apple does not encrypt it. Their, their, your backup is sitting in their servers unencrypted. So if we send a search warrant uh, for that to gather the data, it's when we gather when we when we get it from them, it's unencrypted. Is the way that they have it set up. They'll they'll send it to us encrypted on a thumb drive, but once we open it up, it's all just like we're looking at the phone as you did your backup. So. The the two it used to be two. It's it's kind of changed now. Uh, is logical and physical extractions. Logical is generally the, all that we're getting anymore, uh, especially with uh, especially with the new technology that's coming out. It's this it's just the stuff that's active on the device at the time that we get it. There's not a whole lot of anything uh, extra. Sometimes you'll get deleted stuff if you get an older phone. You'll be able to do a physical uh, dump on it. Sometimes it just Sometimes we get them, sometimes we don't. Android has started to get a little bit, uh, as far as the new boards, uh, the Qualcomm boards, uh, MS, MSM 8909, those type of boards. Uh, we can do a little bit more with those when it comes to gathering uh, physical data, uh, bringing back deleted messages, uh, deleted pictures, uh, deleted text messages, those type of things that we need. For cases, we're able to bring it back uh, with the new system that has came up uh, through Celebrite. They started doing what's called EDL. Uh, we've been able to, to get quite a few phones with that here in the last little bit. And physicals used to be, we would get everything. In 2000, about 2015, 16, you would do a physical and get everything. You'd get deleted text messages, pictures, whatever. It was all there. Well, as, as everything's changed, those have kind of got gone away. And unless you get a rooted uh, device, or we gather a rooted device, there's no way for us to be able to get a true physical on them anymore. As you can see here, this is off the uh, Celebrate website. Uh, this tells you what their, what each of the uh, extractions will give you. Uh, like I said, majority of the time, even with Android and with Apple products anymore, we're only getting a logical. Uh, sometimes here lately, uh, especially with iPhone 10s that are running uh, 12 or 12.1, sometimes we're not even able to get into them to be able to get an extraction. The the computer that we're using doesn't like all the drivers and stuff that are with it, and we're getting a very limited extraction. Uh, a lot of a lot of other agencies are running into the same thing using Celebrite, uh, but if they're able to 
if they have a password, you know, if the password's there and gray key, gray key will pull out a full physical. But again, that's just few and far between that people will give you their passwords, you know, to be able to get onto their phones. This is what the Touch 2 looks like. Uh, it's, that little box right there is uh, $10,000 for, for us to purchase. Uh, it's 30, around $3,800 a year for us to keep the license fee going. This is a sample extraction report um, that, we, that we get as an investigator from uh, Celebrite. It kind of lays out uh, the extraction type, uh, the, the settings on the phone. Uh, we, we can get, uh, put all the other stuff in as far as who the investigator is, uh, where they're, you know, the case number and all that. Uh, same thing with the device information. Uh, this was a, this was a, a physical dump on a, uh, Apple product for iOS. And you can see anything in red was deleted uh, items that they were able to bring back. Sometime, and sometimes looking at that, when you get a report, it's all garbage. You can, you can see that it was deleted. Sometimes it'll bring it back to where you can actually see either, either the image that was there uh, or the note that was there or the contact. You can see it. Sometimes it's, it's just not, you know, it just says it's deleted. You can't really tell anything about it, though. Um, Magnus products uh, with IEF uh, is one that we use quite a bit. It's more internet evidence finder. It's more based on apps. So once we do a cell phone download, uh, Celebrite doesn't like apps. It doesn't like Snapchat. It doesn't like Facebook Messenger. Uh, it doesn't like Kick. All those. It, a lot of times it won't parse the data. When you do a dump, it won't parse that data out. You won't be able to see it. Uh, so. IEF, once you do the dump, you can throw the bin file into it. It'll look at it. Uh, it'll start pulling out. It pulls out Tinder, Kick, uh, Snapchat, Facebook Messenger, um, contacts, call logs, uh, Safari history, Google history, all that stuff. It'll, IEF will pull it out more so than what IEF will. So that we, I use that almost every phone download gets IEF thrown at it as well. Because you'll, you'll be surprised how much different data you get. Uh, from Celebrite with what you're, you know, and a lot of times, as for us, we're looking for different things in a case. A drug case is generally text messages and images. So a lot of times with drug cases, we don't need to run it against IEF because those things are always with the Celebrite report. Uh, we'll, we'll do it on cases if we're asked, but majority of the time it just gets a Celebrite report, uh, and they were able to see what they, what they want as far as with the text messages. Um, IEF has started to go away in some ways uh, for the Axiom, uh, which is Magnet's new product uh, that's way more powerful uh, and robust than what Magnet IEF was. So it's everybody started to go to it uh, to be able to use it for, uh, for what we're doing. It's a little bit about what Magnet does. If it'll play. Nope. Well, I want to play. Okay. This is gray key, as what I was telling about. Uh, with Apple product or with Apple products, uh, that little box right there uh, is fifteen thousand dollars or thirty thousand dollars, depending on what you buy. Uh, and it is from the way I from the way I gather, uh, we don't have it, but from the way, way I gather, it's fifteen thousand dollars every year. It's not a it's not a one time deal when you pay a five thousand dollar license fee. It's the sheriff's department, the local sheriff's department here just got it, so you know they're able to pay the fifteen thousand dollars for it, 
but there's not many agencies that can that can afford that. This product, like I said, this product is they're very secretive. They you will not hardly see anything about uh, anything of that on the internet. Uh, they're they a lot of their stuff started getting out, uh, so they they kind of shut their website down, where it's locked down, to where you can't hardly see anything. If you're if you're a member or you have have the box, they will send you uh, emails about it, but it's all proprietorial, not to release. Uh, so they're they're very very quiet about it. Uh, when when Apple came out with USB restricted mode uh, in the most recent updates, they were kind of they were kind of up in the air about what they were going to do. Um, while I was in class in September at training, uh, the guys, there was an article that came out about it. Uh, a lot of the guys were like, yes, it's, you know, we're down to 12.1 right now to where we can't, we're getting very limited stuff, but they said they're working on it. But as of right now, they still don't have a fix for, a full fix for the physical or for the advanced logicals for a 12.1 uh, phone. So kind of, a lot of these people just went and spent fifteen thousand dollars, and they've got a fifteen thousand dollar desk weight. So you know you gotta. That that was one of the big things with these agencies that just did that is they're, you know, they justified it to their agencies in the beginning, to be able to spend it because hey we can get into these phones, and then Apple finds out about it and shuts it down. So you know they're they're stuck with a you know a one time hit of fifteen thousand dollars whether they're going to renew it or not. Everybody knows about social media, how much everybody's on it. Um, these are the top five uh, media platforms by usage. Uh, we, we as law enforcement have seen a huge growth in the way that Facebook Messenger is used. Um, hardly anybody is using text messages anymore. It's either Facebook Messenger uh, or Snapchat Messengers. Um, Instagram somewhat, but not as it's not as prevalent as the other two. We have we found Naven on our investigations anymore when it comes to people wanting Facebook Messenger. We'll dump the phone to see if any of the artifacts are on are on the phone as far as conversations or anything like that that we can get. But we tell them to as soon as they do it to send a search warrant to Facebook for the messages. You're gonna get you're gonna get more than what we're gonna be able to get from the phone. So that, that's almost a given anymore when it comes to if they're wanting Facebook messages alone, a lot of times I tell them we're not even going to deal with the phone. It's easier for you to go to Facebook to pull the data because it, you're going to get more from them a lot of times than what I'm going to be able to pull from the phone. So like I said, there's some deleted stuff that you'll be able to find, but it all depends on what kind of phone. If you're able to do a physical on it, uh, you may be able to pull some you know, some of the messages back you're able to, but a lot of times we're not able to, to get them, and it's easier for us just to go to cloud to gather the stuff. Kind of sure. Do you ever run it into anyone using, like, a signal, like an encrypted in application? Not very often. You'll, you'll catch one, and I'll, t I'll be honest with you, the people that we see a lot more of that stuff with is kids, like in school. Like, they'll find out ways with their, their school iPads and their phones, Every, almost every kid's phone, uh, iPad that I've dumped here lately from school, from Canal County schools, they all have VPNs on them. Every single kid is running a VPN on their school iPad. So I'm just like, okay, that's that's interesting. So you know that that's what we're that's what we're seeing. Uh, we when they first when Canal County first gave the kids their iPads, the kids were going. I know especially at South Charleston High School. They would go in. They bypassed the firewalls. Uh, they had. They were downloading porn like crazy on their school iPads at school. Uh, I mean, it, it was a. It was crazy the amount of stuff that we were seeing uh, on iPads that we were dumping. Uh, that was there, and you know, Canal County. They figured it out that it was there. They went in and fixed the firewalls and kind of started limiting down, you know, what these kids could do. But in the beginning, it was everywhere. So would you say that they was like basically taking on their own learning experience? Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, they they were they, they were taking care of themselves. Why grandma's like I don't want to push that. Yeah, exa exactly. Had no clue what they. Yeah, most of the parents too. They have 
a lot of the parents have no clue what these, yeah. you know, what these kids are doing or what they're, <laughs> what they're looking at. And the kids have, have found ways to hide stuff from them. Um, we've seen a lot, uh, a lot of the kids, not so much on our school iPads because it's kind of limited back now, but even on phones that we're getting from kids of all the photo vaults that they've got. You know, they figured out how to get you know, photo vaults on it on a calculator and everything else to be able to hide par uh, photos from mom and dad or you know, whoever's taking care of their stuff. We see that all the time. And, you know, you get in there and start looking at it, you know, when you're able to get into it as far as the pictures, man, it's crazy the amount of stuff on it. A lot of us basically do contract the schools out. Yeah, I mean, I, I do, I probably, it's kind of slowed down, but I there for a while I was doing uh, four to five iPads every two weeks for the schools. And a lot of them were all from um, porn stuff as far as kids sending sex, uh, sexting. Sexting is awful in schools, yeah. but there's no teeth in the law to be able to do anything about it. So essentially all we were doing was taking their devices, um, per, per the prosecutor, taking their devices, factory reset them or completely wiping them and giving them back to them. That's what we were running into. So, I mean, it, it's, you know, there's just no teeth to it. And all these kids were having, you know, they have, you dump a kid's phone, you're looking at, generally you're looking at, over a thousand JPEGs every time you do it, and probably half of them were all, you know, all sexting that they had got from from other kids. So we started having to talk to these uh, talk to these classes and explain to them, look, when you hit 18, that's child pornography. Whether you got it when you were 15, you got it when you were 16, you got it when you were 17. If they're underage, they send it to you. You hit 18, it turns into a completely different ball game. You know, when you have it at 17, it, yeah, okay, there's not much that we can say to you. But when you hit 18 years old, and for some reason we would dump your phone for, you know, a drug case or anything else, we're running into all these, you know, all these images. And they're like, oh, that's when I was in high school. It doesn't, it, it, the, the code doesn't say that anywhere that, oh, if you turn 18, that, you know, you're automatically forgiven for anything from, from your past. So you got to kind of, you know, we, we use that quite often anymore. And I found this, but I know there's no way in God's green earth that this is this is accurate. I mean, thir hell, my kids spend 35 minutes when they get home from school on Facebook, so I know it's not, you know, daily. There, it's it's crazy the amount of time uh, that you know that where everybody spends on social media. All right, here's everybody talks about uh, you know. Big Brother tracking you, or the government tracking you, or anybody tracking you. These people here track you more than anybody. It is crazy the amount of information that we as law enforcement can gather just by sending a search warrant to Facebook. They will, uh, whether you have your location services turned on or not, they will, if you open something in it, the local area, they will track you. They will, and they give it to us. We, as long as we hit the search warrant and it hits the parameters of what they, of, you know, as long as our search warrant hits the parameters of what we're asking for, then we get the stuff, we get it. And we've used it for a lot of crimes just to put people in a location. Because um, they, they will even give you, if you, we do a broad search warrant uh, for an area um, at a certain time and a certain location, we will even, you know, we'll even do to where, hey, what Facebook users were active in this area at such and such time, and they'll they'll give it to you. So they they track you, you know, like I said, they track you like nobody's business, you know, because you look at something on, hey, you look at something on your computer, or you look at something on your phone, through Google or another, and then you start scrolling through Facebook, where and behold, you know, what's an advertisement that pops up, something that you looked at 20 minutes ago on, you know, 20 minutes ago on Google. So they, they know they know where you are. Uh, like I said, we we've had great success with them because of this, and they have they've became more so in the last little bit, especially from the breach, uh, law enforcement friendly. They have they have kind of streamlined their their process uh, when it comes to requesting search warrant stuff. They've uh, they've really became a lot easier for us to deal with. Um, they're, 
exigent circumstances such as uh, I dealt with a school uh, school threat about a month ago. So as soon as you call them about it, they are they're on the ball with it. They will they'll call you back. Generally within generally within five minutes, they'll call you back with your with your information that you're wanting. Uh, whether it be IP address or you know whatever it was that we were needing, they were they called right back and and gave it to us. They're they they as big as they are, they still help you know, still help tremendously with us. Yep. Not so much. Not so much for us. Um, we'll use if if we were able to say that yeah the device was there, then we have to build back. You know from there. Did somebody use the device? You know, just because the device was there, uh, did did somebody from the device? We'll you know we'll pull at that at that point we can pull call history, uh, cell phone records, uh, kind of start looking. Was there any phone calls made at that time? Well, yeah, at this time such and such called this number. Well, you look at it and it's such and such as mom, or you know such and such as wife. You know, so how many people are going to call your wife or call your mom from a certain location? You know, when your device is there. So we, we try anymore, especially with digital stuff, because it's so it's so fre it's so new to everybody. Is we try to verify a couple of different ways to be able to put somebody there. We just don't say yeah, you know, yeah, the device was there. And the thing is, how many people how many people leave their device somewhere and go somewhere else? You know, if you've got your cell phone, how often do you your cell phone's generally in your hand or in your pocket? You don't just, you know, unless you, unless you broke into something and you dropped your phone, you know, that it's laying there. But majority of the time, it stays with you. Nobody, nobody just leaves their, leaves their phone at their house. You know, you may forget it for a little bit, but you're going to go back. But how, how often do you, do you go somewhere and you, you don't have it with you? You know, that, so that's became a, that's became a bigger thing for us is we're able to say, especially to courts when we go to ask for search warrants, Look, how you know how often, even to the judge, how often do you leave your phone somewhere? You know, do you not take it with you? you know, they're like, well, yeah, you know, we're able to able to see that a little bit better. That, you know, yeah, it's ninety nine percent of the time you have your stuff with you. So we, like I said, we don't base everything on that. Uh, we try to almost all the time go back and verify that yeah, the device was there. I'm with you. I mean, you make the same assumption just under the legal standard. It will. I mean, it's going to, because I mean, everything's going to keep, you know, eventually all this stuff is going to hit the Supreme Court, you know, some way, shape, or form, like uh, cell phone, cell phone uh, tower information just hit Supreme Court uh, June of this year, because uh, we were able to get, grab that data without a warrant. Uh, Supreme Court says no, you know, you must, you must get a warrant now. So, you know, it, it, all this stuff will eventually hit, you know, eventually hit the Supreme Court to where, um, a huge one that we were running into here for a while was uh, Google, which we'll get into them, but they were saying that, hey, our servers, servers lie outside of the United States. If we send you a search warrant for information and it lies outside the United States, we don't have to, you know, we don't have to abide by it. So that, that's a huge one that's going, to, that's going to come up eventually is, you know, it has to pass through the United States servers to wherever it goes to. Where they're doing it, but they 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 put stuff on so many different servers. But that that's a huge one that that will eventually you know come about is how are if they're storing stuff outside the United States, do they have to abide by by the search warrant because they're a United States based company? So you know we, we'll see a lot of a lot of digital stuff over the next few years that will that will hit the Supreme Court that will you know kind of change the way that we have to do stuff uh, when it comes to this. Um, as we just talked about uh, across the web, how they track you. Um, how many people uh, read the end user license agreement whenever they do these things uh, for what they, you know, for what they're tracking you, know, what they're what they're collecting, what data they're collecting? Uh, it is it is ridiculous the amount of stuff that they collect from you. Um, if you never read those, if you ever get time, you want to go to sleep, read them, uh, and see what all is on there, because they they collect a lot, uh, and they you know, you're you're agreeing to it whenever you install the app, to for them to gather every bit of this information, and it is a lot. Uh, I looked at some of the stuff.
especially for Google that they were doing, we'll get into them, they, they collect everything. Here is one that I absolutely hate. Um, <laughs> this, this, has been a, this has been a thorn in law enforcement side when it comes to Snapchat. Um, by the way that it's set up now, by default, uh, when you download a program, uh, snaps erase or chats erase instant. So you send a snap or you send a chat, as soon as you send a chat, somebody opens it, it's gone. So there's no way for us to be able to pull off the device uh, any of the information. Same way uh, with pictures when it comes to if you have it set up that way. You can go in and change by default in Snapchat to where the uh, messages are kept for 24 hours, but you have to change that. And by the way, that set up default is as soon as you open the snap, or the, you send as you send a snap, the person on the other end opens it, it's gone. So we have, we have found a lot here lately. Uh, kids use this you know, like crazy, and you know, they're sending new pics via this, where there's no way for us, there's no way for us to be able to say that yes, that was a, you know, a pornographic image that was sent. Unless, you know, if you screenshot it, it's anybody that uses Snapchat, if you screenshot something, <laughs> the user knows uh, that it was screenshotted. Well, Snapchat does not keep in any of their servers, uh, any of their databases, anything that they have, they don't keep deleted snaps or sent snaps. You will see the metadata that was there, that yes, a image was sent, or a video was sent, or a message was sent, but you cannot see the actual content. Um, the only way that you can see the content is say that I sent you a snap, you didn't open it. Well, if I hit a preservation request before you opened it, I would be able to see that image that was, that was sent. That's the only way. It's unopened, unopened snapped images. That's the only way that we as law enforcement um, can see. So the kids are, you know, the kids are understanding this and know that, and they send, uh, especially through the school system, they send snaps like crazy. And that's the reason why is that, you know, mom and dad can't see it. You know, nobody can see it because it's gone. Uh, Snapchat came out when, I want to say 2016 or 17 with a newer thing called Snap Map uh, to where if, if you have it enabled, uh, people can see where you are. All your friends can see where you're at. Well, if you look at all of it, and especially with kids, how many you know, people, if you don't know who they are, you just add them on Snapchat. They have no clue who they are. Oh, that's it. I'll just add them. Well, you don't know who you're adding, and they're able to track you to know where you are. You know, it, that's a huge problem for us as law enforcement is dealing with... Um, you know, potential for child trafficking, human trafficking, um, you know, kidnapping, anything. Uh, we had a we had a complaint that came through. This lady was like, I, I talked to this guy once on Snapchat, uh, but he knows everywhere I go, he shows up there. We're like, well, how do you, you know, what are you, are you talking to him? No, I've not talked to him since then. Well, lo and behold, they were still friends on Snapchat. She had her location services turned on. So everywhere that she goes, he knew where she was at. So he would go to those locations. So once we, you know, once we explained to her that, hey, you know, you've got to get rid of this, you know, it stopped. You know, he wasn't able to, wasn't able to find her anymore. Um, Snapchat started as an app that's, it was called uh, Pickaboo. It was just sending images that would uh, disappear. Well, that was in 2000 early 2011, and it kind of changed after that to where it was a messaging. Snapchat's been around since 2011, 2012, and has just recently um, gathered huge amounts of, you know, momentum because everybody can see it because of the, the snaps that are, you know, being gone. And as of, as of February of this year, there's 187 million daily active users of Snapchat. So, you know, the, I, just, I just recently got, uh, got a Snapchat just so I could kind of see how it works. Like, I've got probably 400 snaps, 
My 13-year-old daughter has a little over 28,000 snaps. So you, can see, so you can see what these kids are doing. I mean, that's how they're communicating. It's all snaps. I, I mean, I, I looked at that and I'm like, there's no way. There's no way in the amount of time that I have, you know, to be able to do snaps, there's no way that I'd be able to send 28,000 28, snaps. But they, they don't communicate in any other, any other way more so than just Snapchat. Um, from, you know, from looking at, watching what my kids are doing, when you look at it, they don't text hardly anymore. It's all, you know, Snapchat's uh, messenger. They don't call anybody. Um, if you look at, if I go and look at my phone bill, my phone calls are way up here. I think the majority every time in the last three or four billing cycles, I think my one daughter has made five phone calls. That's it. Yeah. You know, call mom. That's gone. That's, that's it. Yeah. You know, that's the only, the only thing. And they're all one minute phone calls. They don't go, they, they're just a quick, hey, and that's it. They don't, they don't do it anymore. So, yeah, you know, it's scary. It's scary to me as a parent for this app, but it's even more so um, as law enforcement because we have to we have to combat this to try to figure out. Um, Snapchat is good about, and they have a very good uh, web-based uh, thing for law enforcement. You can actually go on if you have a Snapchat. You can go online um, at accounts. I think accounts at Snapchat, and you can download your data. You can download and see every snap that you've ever sent, every friend that you have, anybody that you've ever deleted, anybody that you blocked, uh, when you started your Snapchat, um, the IP address that you used when you started it, uh, the email address that you used when you started it. Um, they keep every bit of that data, and they will provide it to you um, if you do it uh, do a download through the internet. So it, it's it's actually pretty pretty interesting. I did mine a couple weeks ago just to see what it what it showed, um, and it was. You know, it's all pretty, pretty well. You know, right on what what they said it would be. This has became a huge uh, thing for us uh, as law enforcement that we use is uh, mobile phone uh, tower data. Uh, we had a an active case that's still going on right now uh, here in South Charleston, uh, where a a breaking and entering occurred uh, and an arson occurred. Uh, to cover up the breaking and entering, uh, which ended up in about a $850,000 loss uh, of the fire. Um, through everything that we were working on, we were able to uh, gain a suspect, figure out his cell phone provider and his cell phone number. Uh, we sent out uh, to the local, you know, to the, to the provider, they were able to send us a cell phone tower, uh, tower data back, and we were able to put him within five meters of the fire at the time. Uh, so that is, and for us to try to explain to the prosecutors how this works is getting tougher. Um, the prosecutors are not young, young people anymore. You know, we're looking at the one prosecutor that we were trying to explain this to before, uh, was 65 years old. He, he truly had no idea of us trying to explain to him how, you know, how many meters we were able to put somebody in. In all these different areas, you know, we were able to do all the cones. He just could not, he could not figure it out. Um, so we've kind of had to, we've we have law enforcement have had to go in and actually start teaching them and showing them, hey, this is what this is. He asked one time for his secretary, the same prosecutor, uh, to print out a cell phone report. This cell phone report was thirty three thousand pages. He wanted it on paper. They could not figure, they could not tell him, look, there's no way that we're going, you know, that we're going to print out 33,000 pages for you for this when you can look at it on your computer. So it takes a little bit of, you know, a little bit of for them understanding how this, you know, how this stuff works. Uh, exactly. I mean, it, it's, that's what it is, is trying to teach them how you know, we do it. Um, like I said, the, the Supreme Court case changed this. Uh, I've never, I never used it prior to as far as getting either an admin subpoena uh, or a uh, um, anything other than a search warrant to get cell phone data or tower data, that's all we've always used that just to CYA because it's easier for me to go get a search warrant 
to gather the information than it is for me to lose the case. Um, again, GPS tracking, uh, whether you have your location services turned on or off, when you change cell phone uh, towers, as you pass towers, as you go, it records it. As long as your phone's on, it, do, it doesn't have to be communicating with anybody, uh, with anything on the internet, anything. As long as it's passing towers, it will gather your information. And it will give it, uh, they, they gather all this, they keep it in logs, and it's provided to, you know, provided to law enforcement if we ask, you know, with a search warrant. They'll give it to us. <coughs> Same way with, with Google, um, as we talked, I read a lot of stuff while I was doing this uh, presentation trying to gather everything. Google's end user uh, license agreement is crazy, the amount of stuff that they gather. They, I mean, th and they will provide to us, I wish I could find it because I could not find it. They had a thing to where it explained their search warrant policy or a subpoena policy that we would send, send them a, a search warrant. They, Google will actually, if they think your search warrant is too broad, they won't honor it, even though it's signed by a judge. They'll kick it back to you and say it, tell you it's too broad. That's how big they have become, that they're circumventing um, Supreme Courts or, you know, local courts, anything. They're saying, no, you're too broad. Even though we have a, a judge that has signed off on it, they're saying, no, we won't honor it. So there, And there's no way for us to, you know, they're so big. We're not going to pay a, a lawyer to go fight Google. You know, there's there's just no way we will have to end up going and you know pretty much changing our changing our search warrant up to kind of hit their parameters that they're saying yeah this is what you know this is what you're going to have to have, um, but it's interesting to watch that the way they have that set up on their on their website it shows how they go through and it'll talk about how they they honor stuff that they won't honor it if they don't think it's right and it's all it's all based on their opinion it's not based on whether it's a uh, you know, whether the search warrant says, yes, yeah, there or not, it's all based on what they think. All right, anybody got any questions? Um, wouldn't that last thing you mentioned just now, if your search warrant really was too broad, wouldn't they be saving you from an appeal loss? Yes. Or is it not their place to say it, that? It's really not their place, but, again, what happens with that is you get people that are that want to go out and find they're looking for a needle in a haystack, so they throw a broad search warrant out, trying to gather all this information, which is too much information, and it it ends up you know ends up screwing them up. But yes, that's that's what happens a lot with it is you get people that just throw a well, I want every bit of this data from January first to you know today's date, even though your crime only happened from last week to now. You know what? What is the? You know they're going to limit you on what on what you get. Unfortunately, you know, and, and again, that's the thing. They may be, they may save you an appeal in the in the end, but that's that's up for the government to figure out. I mean, because like I said, and that'll be one of the ones that'll that'll end up happening. So, anybody got any other questions? All right. I appreciate it.